As you all know, on this channel, we usually talk a lot about Malaysian stocks. But these days, with the depreciation of the ringgit and the vibrancy in other markets, people are increasingly talking about investing overseas. So today, I want to introduce you guys to an established, reputable broker that can provide you a platform to trade the whole world. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show, Frankie Answers Questions. Interactive Broker. It's a multinational brokerage firm that provides direct market access for traders to invest in stocks, bonds, ETFs, and so much more. All you need is one account and access to the internet. Da. I know what you must be thinking. Ah, your expensive one confirm they will take a big cut of my investment. Ha, that's where you're wrong. Their charges are one of the lowest that I could find. If you're ready for it, let's jump right into our first question. Question 1. How do I open an Interactive Broker account? Opening an account with Interactive Broker is quite straightforward. After clicking on the link in the description below, this page will pop up. Start application, key in the necessary information as required, your email address, a username, password, and the country you are in, and create an account. Once you do that, you will get a notification email from Interactive Broker to continue your account opening process. Make sure you use a real email account instead of randomly typing in letters, thinking to avoid them spamming your email. Click on Verify Account and it will redirect you back to Interactive Broker website to complete the registration process. Over here, you need to select the types of account that you wish to open. In this case, I'm going to assume that you are the sole owner of the account, so let's select the individual account. The rest of it is quite intuitive. Fill in your details like name, address, your birthday, tax identification number if you have one, source of wealth. After you fill up the necessary details in the account's opening form, Interactive Broker will prompt you to ask what type of account you wish to open. Should you open a cash account or a margin account? For beginners, let's stick with the plain vanilla cash account. Margin account would increase the risk of your trading and if you are not sure what you are doing, you may end up losing all your money. Once you get used to cash trading and be confident enough to gear up your trading experience, you can always change it later in the settings. Being a stock trading platform, risk management is very important in order to protect both you and themselves to minimize getting into troubles in the future. Because of that, it requires you to disclose a little bit more about your wealth and the purpose of you opening this trading account. Besides that, knowing your trading experience will also determine if Interactive Broker is able to grant you access to certain features of the platform for risk management purposes. In some countries, capital gain tax is something that investors need to pay to their respective jurisdiction. So the next part here is to provide and verify such information. As Malaysian, we are not qualified for US tax treaty benefits. Go through the certification details, tick yes to agree with the terms stated and sign off electronically by typing in the exact tax that is required to key in. Review the details. If it's all good, sign off again and it's all... No, not that. What the f The final step to complete your application is to make sure that you verify your identity to go through the KYC or know your client process. Once you've done with that, you are one step closer to trading on Interactive Broker. Yes. Yes, queen. Question two, what do I do next? After you have opened your account, the next step is to fund it. One thing to note before you wire money into your Interactive Broker account is that they only accept certain major currencies like Sing Dollar, US Dollar, Euro, so on and so forth. So, if you already have bank accounts in those native currencies, it's best to use them to fund your account. This way, you won't be missing out on the exchange rate and you will be instantly seeing your money deposited into your Interactive Broker account. But if your currency is not accepted by Interactive Broker, in our case, the Ringgit, you can still wire your money into Interactive Broker. To do that, scroll down to your portfolio from the homepage and click Deposit. Use a new deposit method and select a denomination currency that you wish to trade with. In my case, I'm gonna select US dollar. 
and move to get the instructions from the bank wire option. For those who has a multi-currency bank account, you may straight away wire up that account up to avoid double conversion of your native currency into US dollar. For the rest of you guys, just wire up any bank account that is most convenient for you. The wiring process is the same as transferring money from one bank to another, where you'll have to put in the account number, amount, and so on. You can get these details right here. It will usually take up to a few days as you're transferring funds overseas. The other thing that you need to take note of is that your bank may charge you for converting your native currency into US dollar and also for transferring your funds to Interactive Broker. If you're not sure about the amount you are being charged to perform these transactions, it's better to get in touch with your bank to find out. That's it! Just wait patiently for your bank to wire the money over to Interactive Broker and the amount will be reflected on your account once they receive it. Question 3. How do I start my first trade? Whoa, 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 chill. Fine. I know you are excited to start, but it's important to set up your account properly so that you can make better informed decisions before you start trading. Let's say you're interested in buying Google stocks. It's important to have a feel of how the whole tech sector is doing generally. If the sector as a whole isn't doing well, Google stocks are likely not going to do well either on the same negative sentiment even though Google may be the best stock to invest in in the long term. So, to have an overview of the stocks that you intend to trade, you need to build a watch list with very specific parameters to track necessary information to help you feel the market pulse. Before I show you what are the parameters I would include in my watch list, let me explain what makes a good watch list in my opinion. Using Google as an example again. First, we need to put Google in its rightful category. As we know it, Google is a tech stock and very often investors would relate Google with other so-called FANG stocks, namely Facebook or Meta platforms, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Apart from that, it is also important to throw in other semiconductor names to make the watch list more comprehensive. This would include companies like Nvidia, Intel, and AMD. The point is, the more stocks you have in your watch list related to the tech sector, you will get a much clearer picture of the market sentiment towards the tech industry on a particular trading day. To add a watch list for tracking, simply go to the research tab, click watch list, create a new watch list, and let's call it our tech stocks list. After naming it, move on to the next tab and simply enter all the tech stocks that you wish to track alongside with Google. For illustration, I've put in a couple of names here such as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Google. Once you are satisfied with your list, save it. Now, we need to make our watch list more meaningful. This is done by editing the columns or parameters that we want to track to help me make an informed trading decision. For myself, I always start my trading by asking what was the prior day's closing price? This is the reference Reference price that the market thinks it is fair value for the stock given all the available information in the market right up to a day prior to your trading day. From here, the market receives new information for the stocks which will influence the range that the stock is trading at. With that, I'm going to introduce the day high and day low prices into my watch list. This video was recorded over the weekend, so the next four columns are empty. On a normal trading day, we would be able to see the best bid and ask prices and the size of orders that the markets intend to trade at those two prices. Anyways, there are still useful information for us to study here to compare for the following week. From the table I've built here, we know that the last done price for Google was 90.75 which was 45 cents lower than the day before and it was 0.49% loss in terms of percentage. We also know that Google was the least traded stocks among investors compared to the other four stocks in my watch list with only 48.5 million shares traded, meaning that the market was relatively not so bothered trading Google on that day. To sum things up, when I track these parameters, I get a feel of the market sentiment towards the stocks that I'm trading. It's just like how a doctor would observe your ECG even if your diagnosis has nothing to do with your heart because the doctor would want to have an overview of your health in general. Question 4. How do I buy stocks? Ha! Ah. Finally, we can get to the best part. Oh, yeah! To start, go to the trade tab and click on 
order ticket. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Interactive Broker is your one-stop solution to trade the world. This is what I mean. With Interactive Broker, you are able to trade stocks, options, futures, and all the other financial derivatives that you can think of around the world. In this video, we are just gonna focus on stock trading. On the stock page, you will see a search bar on the left side of your page. To buy Google, for example, just key in G-O-O-G-L in the search bar and an order ticket will appear. Alternatively, you can just move your mouse over to Google in your watch list and click on it to trigger the order ticket. There are two ways to buy stocks on Interactive Broker. The first way is to buy according to the quantity of shares you want to invest. In the case for Google, one share is 90 75 so, if you buy two shares, it will cost you 181.50. But there are also times where you want to invest in Google, but you have limited amount of funds. Don't worry. Interactive Broker has this feature where you can still invest in Google even if you don't have enough funds for one share. Just key in the amount you want to invest and Interactive Broker will buy a fraction of Google based on the amount of money that you key in. The fractional shares investment by keying in the amount of funds for a particular stock is a great feature and not all trading platforms have it. It provides great flexibility for investors who do not wish to expose themselves to more than a certain amount of dollars. After indicating the amount of funds you want to invest in Google, you need to indicate what type of order to send to the market. The most common types of orders are limit order and market order. For limit orders, you are essentially setting a limit on your transaction price. For instance, let's say you only want to buy Google shares at $90 but the last done price was $90.75 so you put in your limit order at $90 now you'll play the waiting game until the stock drops to $90 where your order will be matched at the price on the other hand a market order is when you buy a share at whatever it's currently priced at let's use Google scenario again if let's say you were to place a market order instead of limit order on a Google share it means you're buying the shares at the last done price of $90.75 instead of your intended $90. Unless you know what you're doing, it's quite dangerous to place a market order because you can end up buying a share at a way higher price than you wanted. And if you want to sell a stock, the process is pretty much the same thing as buying a stock. Just remember to double check, triple check that you are indeed working on a sell order ticket instead of a buy order ticket to avoid buying even more shares when your intention is to sell off your existing position. Write that down, write that down! <laughs> So far, I've shared a basic walkthrough of how to use Interactive Broker Trading Platform. The truth is, if you spend enough time playing around with it, you will get the hang of it pretty quickly. But knowing how to use a trading platform is not the reason to make money from the stock market. As a responsible trader or investor, we need to equip ourselves with relevant knowledge and be updated with the happenings around the world. Hopefully, you are able to learn a thing or two from our channel so far and with your support, we will continue to produce more and better investment-related content for you in 2023. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.